Well, hello everyone and welcome to Repurpose Live, where we help you to rethink your priorities of growth, wellness, and purpose to create a life that you love. My name is Lissa Figgins and it's my mission to help women like you to have the health, the time, and the resources to better do all the things that you're called to do. And it's my intention each and every week to introduce you to an amazing woman who can also help you along that journey and who also is living repurposed too. So today, I'm really excited to introduce, introduce you to my friend, Kristen Kaufman. She is the founder of Alignment Inc. And she helps individuals, corporations, and groups to find alignment within themselves and within their organizations. She's also the author of a trilogy of books called Is This Seat Taken, which have inspiring stories of these random encounters that can change your life. And she talks a lot too about this next stage of life and how you can live repurposed. So Kristen, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, Let's start a little bit about, yeah, the background of how you got to where you are today, doing what you're doing. So, you know, take us back a little bit and tell us a little bit of your story and how you got to, you know, being this, this woman who's helping others with their alignment. Oh, okay. Well, thank you, Liz. I'm delighted to be here. Um, my story is probably not that dissimilar from many of your listeners. Um, I'm a small town girl, uh, graduated from college and got a, a large job with a large publicly traded technology company back in the 80s. So I'm dating myself. So I'm what I call now a recovered corporate executive. I had um, very large, significant executive roles with three publicly traded companies. And I loved that when I was doing it, Lisa. I found great fulfillment out of it. I grew a lot. I was a global road warrior. Um, I ran large multi-billion dollar organizations. It was great at the time. And then at one point, I, I refer to it as I lost the plot. It was no longer fulfilling for me. And I was, as my term, alignment. I was out of alignment. <laughs> so I'm what I call now a recovered corporate leader turned entrepreneur. And I started my own company about 16 years ago. And I've never looked back. And, you know, I definitely think we have seasons in life. And at that time, the corporate roles that I had were perfect for that season in life. But I actually think now the season I'm in now is a perfect fit. And I'm definitely in alignment with the life that I wanted to create. So in a nutshell, that's like condensing 35 years into like 35 seconds so but that's right. kind of where I am yeah and I love that snapshot because I, I like the fact that you hit on there are different seasons of our life you know we come out of college or come out of um you know just our younger years of life and we're heading in one direction and we're doing those things and I truly believe that each stage builds on itself right and you probably wouldn't be able to serve others the way that you are today if you haven't had those seasons earlier in your career and earlier in your life. Right? Absolutely. My mom always said that everything that's happening to you is preparing you for what is to come. Mm -hmm. And I believe that to be true. In fact, I'm yeah. living proof that that is indeed what's happened. You are. And that's fantastic. And, and that's why I love this stage of life. So most of my audience is after 40. And don't worry if you're listening, you're not 40 yet. You're just going to get, you know, the cliff notes of what to look forward to. And you can start working on this early. But we hit this, you know, this mile marker, maybe it's not exactly 40 on the dot, you know, but it's some kind of a, a mile marker where we wake up and we really just kind of say, okay, what's the season of life I'm in now? And what's working for me now? And what's not working for me now? Like, I love how you said you lost the plot, right? And you yeah. just weren't, that it was what, what, what was working now wasn't. And so by pausing and really getting clarity around what matters most to you now, then you could decide what it is that you're going to be start working, you know, towards. And I think too often, tell me if you found us, especially in the corporate world, do we as women just keep going? We just keep doing the do. We keep, you know, one foot in front of the next because it's just the next thing in front of us or we don't ever stop to think about it, right? And then we end up in a place and we're like, how did I get here? Why am I still here, right? Have you found that to be true in your own yes, life? Yes. And well, I think we all always are evolving. And I think it's folly to think that you're going to start a job right out of college or join a company you know, and you're going to be with that company until the day you retire. I mean, we are always in a process of evolving and learning and growing and changing. And thus, I believe our professional choices, not to mention our personal choices, also are evolving and changing. So that's, you know, I think we're all experiencing that, especially as women, because our, as women, we have, we play multiple roles. We yes. play multiple roles. Yes, yes. And I like to, I wish, I always say, I wish I could have found what I'm doing now back when I was in, in my 20s. But yet, in some ways, I don't. And I don't think I would have been prepared. And I wouldn't have probably said yes or stepped out 
you know, in faith and confidence into what I'm doing now back then, because I didn't have those, those, those things built in my character and those experiences built. So. Oh, right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I absolutely love that. Well, let's talk about that word alignment, right? Okay. I was a teacher. So my former teacher goes, my former English teacher in me says, let's define the term. So when we talk about alignment, tell me your definition of that. What, what does that look like for you? Sure, sure. I will. And I'll tell you how the, the word came to be is, as I mentioned, I was out of alignment. You know, mm -hmm. my last corporate job, I'll never forget. I woke up in the Sofitel Hotel in Minnetonka and I was simply not happy doing what I was doing. And so my definition of alignment is when you love what you're doing, you're good at it. Most importantly, it's tied to something greater than yourself. And when any one of those legs of that three-legged stool are out of whack or out of alignment or wobbly, I like to call it wobbly, then you're wobbly. Because think about it, you know, when you, you might still love what you do, but you're not that great at it, you're probably not going to love it that much longer. And if you're good at it and you no longer in, are enjoying it, you're probably not going to be that great at it anymore. And you're frankly not going to be fulfilled. But more importantly, if it's not tied to something bigger than yourself, and that is different for everyone, then you're probably going to suffer from burnout because I call that the renewable energy source. You know, when you, when it's tied to something bigger than you, there's a renewable energy there. And, you know, and I also fervently believe, Lisa, that when we are aligned, we are most definitely at our most powerful because we're in flow. You know, we're in flow. We're, we're not fighting the universe. We're in flow with the universe because we're doing absolutely what we've been intended to do. You know, our strengths, our talents, our gifts, our purpose is all in alignment. And we're, we're fulfilling that purpose and we're living that destiny. And that to me is when it's just, I, I love to use that wonderful quote from the movie Jerry Maguire, Qua. Do you remember that when he, when Cuba Gooding's character was talking about, oh, it's the qua? Well, that's really what we're talking about here. You know, when everything is playing in accordance and in harmony with the other. Yeah, yeah, I love that. In that a feeling, nutshell. Yeah, that feeling when you're like, I just want to freeze this. This is what I, I, I just, you know, when you have that feeling of this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And, and like you said, you don't feel exhausted by it. You feel energized by it. And yes. so I love how you brought those three things together you love what you're doing and you're good at it <laughs> and it's it's tied to the bigger purpose because those three I mean what a powerful combination right yeah. watch the world here she comes and yet so many women I know for myself included I've been in that place where you know maybe I had one of the three maybe I was lucky and had two of the three maybe I had a glimmer of you know all three together for a moment but it didn't necessarily stay there and so, you know, so often I think we, we don't live in that, in that flow and in that space. So what mm. might be some of the red flags or some of the, the warning signs? I'm thinking of my car, right? Because we think about alignment, we think about our car being in alignment, right? So if your alignment is off in your car, it's very obvious because you're all over the, the road. And so you take it in to get it realigned. But, you know, in our lives, sometimes it's harder to recognize those. We don't have that little light that comes on the dashboard and says, you're out of alignment, beep, beep, beep. Um, so yeah. what are maybe some of the red flags that someone Yeah, you know, I think people know. Honestly, Lisa, I think people do know. I think oftentimes, though, we're in denial. You know, uh, people know. I mean, you, you, you're tired. You don't look forward to going to work. Um, you wake up in the morning and you're dreading the day. Um, you know that you're supposed to do one thing. And, and I'm not talking about everybody has things that are not their favorite thing to do in their professional career and their personal life. I totally get that. I'm talking about the, the overarching, oh my gosh, do I really have to go into work today? I hate what I'm doing now. Or you're not in alignment with the culture. I mean, I coach a lot of executives that are great at what they do, Lisa, but they're not in alignment with the culture in which they're doing it. You know, the value systems are not in alignment. They're out of whack. So we, most of us know that most of us know when we feel that there's an intuitive hit that you feel like something's just not quite right. It's out of, it's awry, you know it, but we're in denial and we think, oh, if I just keep powering through, I mean, we, as women do this really well, I'll just keep my head down and I'll just keep powering through. And frankly, there's no way you can power through being out of alignment. Yeah. Yeah. No way you might be able to survive it that you will never pull it all back together because there's one of those three variables that's out of kilter. And it doesn't matter how fast you run or how hard you work. It's simply not going to put it back into that frame. Yeah. I love that. And I think you're right. And I love that, that you spoke right to that, that most of the time we know 
that we're out of alignment, but we're just not doing something about it. So I want to, I want to circle back to that in just a minute, but okay. my one question that comes to mind is, okay, like none of us, you know, came out of the gate going, I want, I want to find something that I don't love that I'm not good at. <laughs> <laughs> no purpose. Like nobody went looking for that and then said, yep, I'll sign in the dotted line. Give me that life. Right. And then, and then, you know, years down the road, they're wondering why they're out of alignment. Most of the time, you know, we think this is a good thing. So what happens to get us from, you know, where we were when we said yes to whatever it is that, you know, whatever thing it is, whether it's professional or business to this place where now there's not alignment there anymore. Like what, what happens along the way? Yeah. Well, I think a couple of things, first of all, I mean, I think all of us have made judgment calls um, with good intentions, but mm -hmm. yet perhaps everything was not as it, we perceived it to be. So let's just give ourselves some grace and a pass on that because how many times have we started a role, a job, a volunteer you know, position, whatever, and we think it's going to be one thing. And when we get in there, we're like, oh my gosh, this is not anything like what I thought it was. So give yourself some grace that not everything is always as it appears to be. So that is oftentimes what happens, okay? The second thing that I think often happens, Lisa, is we listen to external sources, external voices, and not our own. Yes. And I mean, I was guilty of that in the last position that I had in corporate where I was listening to all of the external rhetoric because I was, I was on the high board, I was leading a huge organization, you know, traveling the world, la, 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 and I was offered this big job and I listened to all the external voices, you know, oh, what a great position, a lot of money, a lot of span of control, a lot of notoriety, la, la, la. Something inside me, if I'm really going to be honest with you and your listeners, said to me, sounds too good to be true. And you know what? Most of the time when it sounds too good to be true, it is. It, I had that role for maybe two weeks, Lisa. And I oh, wow. knew that I had made a mistake. Now I survived it for two years, okay. right? I kept that head down and I was just on that hamster wheel doing what I was doing until I woke up, as I've mentioned in the Sofa, Sofa Tell Hotel and called my parents and said, I'm out of here, you know, because it was, I was out of alignment. I was simply not in, in any sort of good state, but I think I knew it, but I was listening to external voices and not my internal voice, mm -hmm. our intuition never with a capital n it never lies to us never and but yet, oftentimes we put la 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 we we think that right. our head knows better than our our gut and that just is seldom the case if ever you know sometimes they can be in alignment which is golden but when our gut is telling us yeah i don't know we need to we need to listen to it Yes. And so often, I think, especially as women, we struggle with being people pleasers, you know, because we're nurturers and we're wanting to take care of people. And sure, I can do this. And so, like you said, we're often listening to all those external voices of what other people want for us, or what other people's expectations or needs are, and that they're just projecting that onto us versus us really listening to that inner voice inside. I thought of a third one that I wonder if you've, if you've experienced this or you think that we could add this to the list. What about the whole idea of just you changing as you grow, right? And oh, absolutely. It's like I mentioned earlier, we're always evolving. Yeah, yeah that was, you know, we're always evolving. So to think that you're going to stay in the same career trajectory, you're going to stay in the same path, you're going to, um, again, that may happen for some people and it's a golden thing when that happens. But as a lifelong learner, and an individual and a human, in the human condition, we are constantly evolving. To think that we're going to choose one thing and that's going to be it for the 50 or 60 years that we work is just folly. Um, right. And frankly, I think it's a limiting perspective. It's a limiting belief because there are lots of ways we can contribute, lots of ways we can contribute. And it doesn't have to be just one thing. I mean, I'm a portfolio entrepreneur. I have multiple ways in which I'm contributing to the world, right? Um, so it doesn't have to just be one thing. So I agree with you. We are constantly evolving um, and we need to be open to opportunities that present themselves to us. Yes, yes. Because it so doesn't happen by accident. You know, I've written about that in three books. An incidental encounter is not incidental. Right, right. You know, but you wouldn't be in that place to have that encounter had you not said yes to something else or had you not taken a step 
you know, forward towards something else. And so, you know, I, I truly believe you're right. You open one door and that opens up so many others. Yes. It's providential. No question about it. It's providential. Right. Right. I love that. I love that. So if somebody's listening today and they're thinking to themselves, okay, Kristen, this, this all sounds great. Yep. I'm, I'm probably out of alignment. I'm, I'm hearing you, you're raising my hand and saying, all right, I, you know, and feeling that frustration, feeling that tug, feeling that I don't want to stay in this place. What are a couple of practical tips that you would offer her to get back into alignment or to figure out what that new alignment is going to look like? Okay. So the first thing I would suggest, and this is going to may sound a little woo woo to your listeners, but I did it myself when I left corporate and I, I drank my Kool-Aid, you know, I hired a leadership coach and this person helped me so much because I had blinders on Lisa that I thought this was the direction I had to go because I was a corporate executive and therefore that's where I needed to play. And I, I had to get, I call it the control alt delete moment, where I had to refresh my screen and have a completely different perspective on where I was heading. So one of the practical tips that she gave me, and it's, uh, it was, it transformed my life. She said, I want you to write a letter to somebody really important in your life. I wrote it to my parents and I want you to write that letter as if it were one year in the future. So you're looking back on where you are one year in the future. And I want you to write it as if the life that you're living one year from now is the life that you've always wanted to live. Mm -hmm. And she said, and, and resist the urge to put, you know, I'm going to work for this company or I'm going to have this job. Just describe the life. Yeah. So my letter, um, you know, went something like, dear mom and dad, I can't believe a year ago um, I was you know, unsure about where I wanted to go and what I was going to do and how I was going to contribute. And here I am one year later and I'm making coffee in my own coffee machine because I understand I was commuting. I was traveling the world. I was living on room service, basically. And I was missing that home element. So, I mean, this is how granular I got. You know, I'm making coffee in my own coffee machine at home. I'm taking walks with a dog because I couldn't have a dog before. I have my little puppy now. That, and, then I, and then I gradually in that letter described professionally how I was contributing, the people that were in my life, my posse. You know, they were supportive of me, my spiritual life, my fitness, my health. And I described it in detail and I mailed it to my mom and dad. And I'm telling you, Lisa, I hope I don't cry when I say this because I've lost both my parents since then. I, in the last two years, I've lost both my parents. And this letter I found when I was cleaning out my dad's office, and it was in a file. And I read that letter. Every single thing that I had written in that letter had manifested in my life. Wow. So I'm telling you, there is a powerful practice of declaring and writing very descriptively what you want your life to be as if you were already there. Yes. yes. And, um, you know, that's the first thing. And that's one practical tip. And I can tell you right now, um, it gives you vision. It gives you descriptive um, measures. It gives you, it forces you to formulate in your life what you want your life to look like. The how is not what you're after. You're after the what and the where, not the how. Right. Right. Yeah. The second tip that I would give, and again, I, I, this might sound a little spooky and woo woo again, but I'm a big believer in it. I've written three books on it. Pay attention to the people that cross your path and pay attention to the experiences and the opportunities that you are exposed to. Because I do not believe, as I mentioned a minute ago, that incidental encounters are incidental at all. I think they are not incidental. I think people cross your path and experiences are brought to us um, to teach us something, to expose us to something, perhaps to enlighten something within, that we already know within ourselves. And that kind of gets your mind thinking about how in choices, how and what choices you can make to, to basically make your life what you want it to be. Those incidental encounters are, are providential, I believe. Yes, I, but we have to pay attention. You know, you have to be present to win. So you have to be present in the moment, right? You have to be present to win. And then the last tip, this is again, a, a, a pretty, it might sound woo-woo, but again, it's a practical tip. Resist the urge to listen to 
naysayers and people that might think that a choice that you might be making is outside of the realm that they think you should choose. No one knows you better than you. So listen to your intuitive voice, listen to your, your, you know, your intuitive hit and just remember that nothing is permanent. Right. right. So even if you make a choice and it may not be the right choice, it's all right. It's okay. It's preparing you for what is to come. So just, you know, take a step back and go, wow. Okay. That didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. Let's revisit. Why did I make that choice? Nine times out of 10, it wasn't because your intuitive voice told you to take it. It's because you were listening to some other person. I, that's every time that's happened to me. That's, that's where I've been at fault is that I wasn't listening to myself. I, I call those dream stealers, right? Those outside voices. It's like the crab in the bucket. You know, the, the other crabs don't want the one crab to get to sit to this, this big world out there. So yeah. They, they keep pulling them down. Right. And they keep yeah. you know, pull, pulling you back into that bucket because that's their safe space. And if you grow beyond that, that makes them feel a little uncomfortable and like maybe they're missing out on things. So yeah. You're right. like, can't we all get out of the bucket? See, that's where I've, I mean, I'm an abundance kind of gal. I'm not a scarcity kind of gal. So every, all the boats can rise all the exactly. boats can rise you know yeah and often too I think you know I know for me and I actually just recently did a podcast on this as well but sometimes we have that that you know, we have our intuition which is our that gut feeling that we know right this is it but sometimes there's that inner voice you know maybe it's not always the outside voices from other people but it's that tape we keep playing of you didn't succeed at this before. What do you have to offer? You, you know, who's going to want to, you know, believe you, who's going to want to work with you, you know, like those things that it's, it's not the gut, but it's yeah. just that thing, right. That plays. And so yeah. recognizing that voice too, and saying, I'm not listening to her either. Cause she's just trying to take this, you know, this in a different direction as well. So, yeah. wow. Yeah. Wow. Such powerful. I mean, I love these practical tips and I think these are, mm. you know, they, they, they all come down to pausing and reflecting and really thinking, you know, and I really think that's the key because I think our tendency in this culture we're in, and especially as women is just to be busy, 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 and just always be doing, 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 and, you know, and, and we're making decisions all the time and not always paying attention and being present, like you said, in those moments to really think about where that decision or that lack of decision, that indecision is going to take us. So, by pausing and, you know, doing things like writing a letter and, and paying attention to the people and opportunities that come across our path and resisting listening to those dream stealers, that can help us kind of clear out the clutter to be able to focus on that, that intuition, that inner gut to that, you know, why am I where I am and where do I want to be and how can I get these three things into alignment? And that's what's going to make all the difference, right? I think so. Yeah, well, I'm excited. I know that there are people listening right now who are just, you know, kind of going, okay, I've got three things I can start with, and you have so many other resources and things that you can offer. So tell us, you know, where can someone find you? Oh. What's the best way to get in touch with you and or any resources that you have? Um, oh, well, my website, kristenkaufman.com, you'll find everything there. Um, I have, um, my, of course, my coaching practice, my consulting practice, my books. Um, I'm happy to show a book here. Um, so this is the first book, The Random Encounters That Change Your Life. And this is the second book. And for many of your readers, listen, this one might really hit a nerve. It's, is this it taken? It's never too late to find the right seat. This is about late in life success stories, which is so amazing. These people that I interviewed and everybody from Diane and Nyad to, um, you know, Ray Kroc to, you know, Grandma Moses, these people are amazing. And then the last book, which all of these became bestsellers, this one became a bestseller in the first week, Is the Seat Taken? No, I Saved It For You. This one's uber vulnerable. Um, I kind of go there about my life and choices that I've made and um, good and bad, right? Constructive and you know, destructive. And um, so it's a pretty vulnerable book. But all of that, along with tools, by the way, this last book, um, has in the back a complete workbook on alignment. Um, and it asks questions, it gives you some practices that you can that you can actually go through. But all of that's on my website, kristenkaufman.com. Okay, perfect. And we will drop that link in the show notes. So that way, if you're listening and you're not able to write that down right now, or you want to spell it correctly, you can just click on that link and make sure you have it. 
Um, and I will also drop a link to uh, a free life priorities audit that I put together just to help push pause and just kind of, you know, start thinking about some of these different areas of your life. Sometimes we're so focused on, for example, our family because we're in the stage of raising kids or maybe we're so focused on our field and that career. And then we're kind of neglecting other things like our faith and friends and fun and, you know, some of those other areas. And so I'll drop the link to that as well because it's a great way just to kind of push pause and start looking at where am I and this whole idea of alignment, you know, do, does my life line up with, with my priorities and what's most important to me? So, and I know that, you know, if you're listening, we, I talk about this all the time. This may be exactly where you are right now. This may be something that you need down the road, or this may be somebody that a friend, a coworker, a family member needs to hear. So please share this with them, because I truly believe that when we, especially as women, are living in alignment and we're, we're putting these three things together, you know, imagine, like you said, the power of what we're going to be able to do and the impact and the legacy that that's going to build moving forward. So please make sure that you share this with others. So Kristen, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, uh, listen, it's been my pleasure. Thank you. It's been my yeah. pleasure. I love it. I'm going to ask one question. I always like to ask an off the cuff question at the end that you haven't prepared for or thought about, but just you know, if that woman, you know, what's that one last thing you would say to that person who is not in alignment um, that you would say to encourage, inspire, or challenge her today? It's never too late as long as you have breath. I love that. I love that. Well, fantastic. Well, thank you so much for that. And, you know, thanks for joining us today. Remember to keep rethinking your priorities because the goal is to create and live this life that you love. So take care and we'll see you next time. Thank, thank you, you so much, Lissa. All right. Bye-bye.